Actus is one of the world's largest emerging market private equity firms after being spun out from the CDC, the United Kingdom's development arm, in 2004. And in 2011, Actus was voted the Latin American and African private equity firm of the year and continues to invest heavily on the continent. David Cook, one of the firm's directors, joins us to tell us what deals the firm has been involved in of late before we get there a little more colour from Warren at the Wall. That's right, Bronwyn. We just wanted to cover this a little bit more from a global perspective on the private equity industry because Actus is uh, a very well-known and large emerging markets private equity firm. And this is just a, a view of the pan-African commitments, um, the, the portion of money going to the private or through the private equity industry. Uh, just at the moment in 2011, you can see undrawn commitments uh, in pan-African uh, amounted to about 17 billion, uh, undrawn in South Africa, which is money that they've got but they haven't put to use. Uh, about 17.1 and then you can see that they've invested quite a large portion of, of the total which is 81 billion uh, rand. If we move to the next slide, it just gives you a feel for the extent or the, 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 the sort of degree that private equity firms are involved in the economies of countries uh, sort of across the world. You can see uh, in 2011, which is the grey bar here, very high percentage in Israel. Um, very big, quite big in the States, almost 1%. And then you can see as we go along here, South Africa at 0.17% of GDP. And then some of our peers in the emerging markets, Russia, Sub-Saharan Africa and Brazil, you can see that still uh, quite a small amount of the total GDP uh, being generated is, is from private equity investments. And then just the last graph I wanted to show, which was uh, unrealized investments. Again, this is, just goes back to um, the performance of some of the funds, obviously a key feature of private equity investing is that uh, the, there's no market to determine the valuation, so you need to have the firm use a, a certain operating standards to generate the valuations. And it's been a little bit of a tough time. We can just see here, uh, this is the latest valuation versus the initial cost or initial investment, and it's lower than the initial cost. So perhaps David can give us a bit of insight into what's going on in some of the underlying investments uh, actors have on the continent and perhaps uh, in the emerging markets they operate. Well, that's an appropriate place to start. What's happening with some of the underlying investments and perhaps uh, focusing on the hot spots right now? Mm, sure. Well, I think in an African context, um, the, the change in attitude from the international investment community towards Africa is just staggering. Um, you know, when we spun out of CDC in 2004, as you referred to in the opening, um, yeah, the Africa was sort of a, a really novel uh, conversation in the in our international fundraising conversations. How that has changed today. Um, the uh, investors are now uh, sometimes slightly more wary of other parts of the world and, and really are coming in, in force at, at, at Africa. I want to just give you some anecdotal evidence there. Having just come back from Davos, Switzerland, the World Economic Forum, we had a de-risking Africa debate in the official WEF agenda. There was no standing room in that forum and everyone was talking about Africa and the opportunities and President Jonathan from Nigeria, President Zuma were treated as, as heroes, interviews across the board. Mm -hmm. So there's definitely a tangible excitement there about really Africa. Is. There really is. David, I just, I just wanted to come in here and ask you, I mean one of the, the, the key things I think we've learnt about Actus and the way you guys operate is, is just how active a private equity firm is in the management and obviously the running of the company. But I think just for the benefit of our, of our audience, uh, you've got uh, an, a network, I think, uh, of uh, operators almost across the world in emerging markets. Just tell us how you start putting together the intellectual capital at a company sure. that you acquire sure. and, and what you hope to do by um, injecting your own people into, into some of these businesses. Well, I think the starting point is the sort of lens that we look at new opportunities through, and, and that will be from both a, a, a local on-the-ground view um, as well as a global sector lens. So we focus on specific sectors where we like to believe we, we, we understand relatively well. Uh, we surround ourselves uh, within those sectors with ex-chief executives uh, and the like who have traveled the journey in those sectors um, when we look at new opportunities. I can't let you carry on talking about sectors. You've got to tell me which sectors are we, are we talking about sure. in terms the, of your focal The sectors area. that Actus focuses on are, are driven by an underpinning across the emerging markets. Two, two key themes. The first is the, the more obvious one of the rising consumer, and the second is the underpin of the growing infrastructure development and, and demand for infrastructure across our markets. If we then sort of unpick that a bit, uh, we then focus on four dedicated sectors within that. Financial services, um, consumer, industrials, and, and healthcare as well. 
So those are, the, those are the key areas of focus. It's not to say those are the only pockets of opportunity, but it's where we have t decided uh, to, to focus our time and effort on. Just in terms of going back to that, uh, the way you, you operate and try and put, align the right people into, into the businesses, can you give us an example of, of deals that you've done recently where you've uh, sourced people through your network sure. and, and put them into the business and put the business to work? Look, look all of our investments we approach with um, both the investment professionals whose, whose day job it is to go and find those new opportunities and, and actually undertake the investment, the transaction itself. But we also marry that with what we call a value creation team. So this is the team that you refer to that has uh, often is consists of individuals who are ex-chief executives, ex, um, come out of industry and can help us and particularly help the management teams we sit alongside drive through the value creation plan. And, and that can take various different forms according to whatever that particular company needs. But specific examples. Um, we own a business called Vlisco, Pan uh, Western Central Africa fashion fabrics business. We brought onto the board of that um, the former chief exec and chairman of Hermes, the French fashion brand. You know, and he, so he has really provided a lot of input in terms of what it takes to take for a business like Vlisco into a global context in, in the fashion industry. That's about one example of that. Just in terms of uh, the, the types of transactions you do, in, in a country like America where you have a, such a large public market, mm. a lot of private equity firms evolved to take those uh, companies private. Uh, and, and I think KKR was, was probably the, one of the most mm. well-known deals there. But in terms of the African continent, it's a little bit different to the types of transactions you're getting involved it, it, with. It is. What are the types of companies that you're seeing that are able to be acquired or, or to, to be invested in by a private equity firm on the continent at the moment? Well, uh, Africa, like, like the rest of our markets, the Actus markets across the emerging markets are, are often, the corporate space is often dominated by family controlled firms. Um, so family succession is a huge theme for the deals that Actus uh, invests in. So that, that, there is a real difference between taking a, an established listed uh, business off the stock market and your KKR reference um, compared to traveling that journey with, with a family in terms of what what they go through, um, and it, it often amazes me how, how similar the, the, the issues are that a family, whether they are running a family-owned business in Sao Paulo or Lagos, face. They're, they're identical issues in a different cultural context. Um, so Actus is, is, uh, has the scars on its back from uh, traveling the journey with those kind of families. Um, and, and, but largely, the investments that Actus is doing uh, in the emerging markets are growth investments. They may be fairly large investments, but unlike uh, some of our, our colleagues in the US or, or Europe, there will be a lot more financial engineering in, uh, as the basis for, for their investment thesis compared to the underpin of, of growth. Is that, that's what we're investing in. We had Stephen Loebscher from Investec Asset mm. Management on the, on the show the other day. And again, their focus is very much Africa and a, a big proportion of that is into the unlisted space. And the question I asked him, him is how you find the, the crown jewels in each of these territories <laughs> when you're dealing with so little information flow. Yeah. We've all traveled Africa you know, and it's tough out there. So what is it that you're doing on the ground to unlock that value? I mean, I think the, the, the starting point again is, is teams on the ground. Uh, without that, I think it'd be very tough. Um, so, you know, colleagues. JVs, are you talking about joint no, ventures no, with nationals? Our, our teams. Your, your teams. Uh, so, so, our teams in Lagos, Nairobi, Cairo, Johannesburg, and uh, across Africa, um, being able to, to unpick uh, some of the, the, the less obvious facets of a, of a business that you will only know if you live and work in, in, these, in these regions. Um, so, um, th that's the sort of starting block, and then it's uh, it can be tough. Um, you know, data data analysis is often very thin. Uh, I come back to the Vlisco example before investing in that business. You know, typically, a, a U.S. Uh, counterpart would look at market stats of market shares, and like it's non-existent in terms of a, an informal traded market. Uh, so what we did there is we went across with the help of a, a consulting firm and did two and a half thousand customer interviews right across Western Central Africa, um, and then start to piece together the thesis of why we think this is a great business or not to invest in. So um, it's but it's challenging. It's not, a, not as glamorous being a deal maker in private equity <laughs> as it's made out to be. I guess you've got to really it's roll up the fun. sleeves and get to work. Yeah, uh, one of the questions I wanted to ask you, with, uh, with your thesis that you, you invest in growth companies and growth sectors, why would these family businesses want to sell? And the second part of that question is, when you introduce an institutional investor like yourselves, uh, how do you make the transition from a family-run business mm. uh, to a 
corporate, a, a company or corporate structure with corporate governance standards? You can just think about those structures in terms of bank accounts. Family businesses is notoriously bad at having one yeah. bank account, you know, personal and business. Yeah, and 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 typically, you know, to sweeping generalisation, but you know, great at sales, highly entrepreneurial, super energetic, but struggle. The businesses struggle to keep pace in in the finance function, in HR, and organisational structure and the like. But uh, the, the the short answer is clearly not all families do want to partner or, or, or give up the crown jewels. Um, so it can take quite a long time in engaging with a family uh, who are at this decision point. Um, and, and often that decision point is driven by a succession issue, uh, where perhaps the, uh, the next generation aren't as interested in running the business. Uh, and the existing family members realize that uh, the, the next 10, 15 years of this journey is going to be very different to the journey they've just traveled. So they look to someone like us to help them uh, start to professionalize uh, the management team, introduce new talent. Um, and, and often that's a stage process. We invested in a personal care business called Paris in India. We started on a minority uh, position in that business. We worked with the then chief executive, the main individual within the family, for two years. And then together with him went out to the market and found a professional CEO, if you will, uh, and other management team to come in for the next three to four years of that business, uh, putting in the right systems, uh, putting in place uh, environment, social and government governance you, You're practices. creating an asset of value, that proverbial, there's something tangible Precisely you can sell that. at the end of the day. Precisely that, and, and, and often then uh, the, the multinational community will then recognize that that's a business which they can feel comfortable investing in as opposed to the, the, the more informal family business that, that we started out with. Uh, We're going to have to take this partners. conversation further at, at another, uh, time. another time. I think so, definitely, especially on the, on the family business front. Dave, thanks so much for your time. David Cook, Director at Actus.